Hi there, welcome back to Torment, Tides of Numenera. We're here in the Order of Truth. We have been given a quest about the Anechoic Lazaret by Sully Mary here. Our former lover, as we know now. Yes. She has also sent Quarrow there, so let's see what we can do. Let's go to the Reef of Fallen Worlds and open up this ancient structure. Mechanical thing. And we'll do it very quickly, as uh, you should always hurry with your quests here. I'm ready. As I've experienced in the early access, that they can be definitely time critical and they can fail if you don't do anything quickly after you've accepted them. So let's not rest and go into this as quickly as we can. Uh, also, I'm sorry. Um, no, it's okay. Yeah, I've got a new mouse for the Let's Play. Like a, a very cheap burrow mouse, but it is much quieter than the other one with a, with a mouse wheel. Sorry for that out of character. I'm just explaining why I sometimes scroll a little bit mad. We shall see. So let's see, what can we find out, that, that crazy crack here again? Yes, now. Oh wait, 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 there's a Memo Vera thug. Hmm. No, let's, let's focus on that first. We'll have to remove them though later. I mean, they're into our, our what? Wait, let let the door alone. What's what's here? Just seen that. What's this? Nice. We'll take that all. Ready. Now let's go in here. This metal door is thick and heavy and unmarked by time. Double rows of circular bumps run horizontally and vertically across its surface. As before, one of the bumps slides open and a few waving strands of synth emerge from the hole that hold the metallic eye of a mlox near the open aperture. Solimary said, We should. The waving strands whip out, wrapping themselves around the eye. For a moment, the eye comes to life, buzzing and whispering. Getting warmer in your hand. The synth fibers make soft, fluttery sounds in return. After a moment, they withdraw. The door slides open and you step into the chamber beyond. And what's in here? <gasps> what is that? Murden, a cluster of hunched creatures, awaits you in this dark room, smelling of rust and blood. They are bird-like abhumans with chipped beaks, matted feathers and filthy leather robes. It's not their appearance that reminds you who they are. It's the gritty static that fills your head, a side effect of the creature's telepathy. These are murdens, cruel and cunning scavengers, and a fifth of their number lies dead on the ground with great chunks torn out of its body. Your ability to read minds only excavates the static, amplifying it to painful levels. It takes a severe effort of will to shut down the noise. Apparently, reading the minds of Murdens is a bad idea. Oh, we got damaged. What an odd place to find Murdens, Tybia says, then shrugs a well. At least killing them is good for the health. Uh, it is? Of course, the things spread disease, or so I'm told, he squirts at you. If you don't fancy a fight to the death just now, we could try parley. Just know that they'll attack if you back them into a corner. He grins all if you show even a hint of weakness. Good luck. The largest Murden straightens, eyeing you, snapping its beak once, twice. It seems to be waiting for you to speak. Well, what should we try? I mean, we are explorers and scientists. 
We don't want to kill them already. I mean, a vivisection would be an int very interesting, but um, hmm, yeah. What happened to your dead friend? The Merlins shriek and toss their feathered heads at your words. Largest one swells beneath his robes, puffing out his down, his down like a threatened bird of prey. And yet none of them will quite meet your eyes. The largest one bears its talons at you, hissing, and the clinging static of its thoughts intensifies. Uh, showing that we are no threat will make them attack, probably. We draw our weapon to frighten them. The lead Murden cocks its head at your daring, bursts of static through your aching head hint at the creature's silent laughter. The other creatures glance uncertainly at each other. Mm. We'll try to persuade them first. As a good scientist would appeal to the rationality of them. Step aside, maybe they want to leave this place. Ah, uh, wow, 40%. Hey, he's much better. He should have more points. Let's make him, let's make Tybia try. Oh, he failed. For a moment, it... For a moment, it seems that you'll get through this without bloodshed, but no. The leader's greedy eyes flicker over you, searching for weaknesses and settle on your belongings with helpless... Avarice, shrieking, it lunges at you, and its companions follow suit. Oh my god. One, two, three, four. But they are wounded. It's Tybis' turn. Yeah, you don't have much to do, right? You can just attack. Oh, what is that? We can hook. Can faint. Ah, uh, we can... Use the sucker punch. Try that. A gold sucker punch, right? Let's go. 70%. Should be okay. Damnation. 10 damage. Very good. What is it that we'll try? We'll probably try to just attack. It's only 65% right now, so... Basic attack, 65%, 85%. Need only very low damage, so let's make it just a basic attack. Oh, that wasn't enough. It's not good. Let's run in. She should make it. Basic attack. Oh my god. Ah, oh, yeah. Let's let's walk a little bit forward then. Improbable. Ow, oh my God! The static fields. I can't, can't die. Not feeling and that's saying something. Oh, something really bad happened, right? We died. Spectre, I can't say I expected you back so soon. Hmm, something feels odd about this man. But it takes a while to put your finger on it. It's his thoughts. They aren't there. Or rather, they are there, but they're indistinct. Kind of white noise that blends in too well with the background hush of this place. Um, why am I here again, Spectre? You died. I mean, not dead dead, but you came awfully close, he leans in. You should be more careful out there for both of us. Are you always here? Shrugs, where else would I be? I found the resonance chamber. It is broken. Yeah, I saw that. I don't see everything you do out there in the world, but I definitely saw that. You have to find a way to fix it. What should I do now? 
The chamber broken, I'm not sure. We need to find someone who can fix it. That chamber's your only hope. Without it? Um. Mm, your thoughts are fuzzy. Why can't I read them? His voice is dry, but his smile takes on some of the sting from his takes some of the sting from his words. I imagine it's because we're in a place of pure thought. I am a construct of pure thought, and that our conversation is taking place on the level of thoughts. Most things here aren't real. It would be like reading your own mind. How do I get back this time? Puzzle's still there. I don't see why it wouldn't work twice. Is there anything to do while I'm here? You mean apart from the cabaret acts, distillery is an endless adventure just behind the next wrinkle in your mind. He jabs you in the arm with his elbow. Ha! And if you believe that, sorry, but it's your mind. There's nothing like that here. I've looked. Still, you've changed things plenty already. I wouldn't be surprised if something showed up here eventually. So has anything changed since the last time I was here? Shrugs, look around. It's your mind. All right. Um, what should I do now? To find someone who can fix the chamber. All right. I think I'm ready to go. Farewell. And it has changed. I don't know. Let's get back to this, though. Where are we now? Imbitu, death, the stink of it, of dried blood and rotting flesh, fills your nostrils. This is your first clue that you are somehow still alive. The second is the glow of candlelight, warm on your eyelids and the icy stone beneath your back. Slippers scuff the ground near your head. Gather around, children. Elderly man says, gather for the feast. What? Uh, they they want to eat me? Open your eyes. Despite the glare of the dim candles, which seem at least momentarily as bright as sunlight, you see the robed figures recoil, shout and step back. Only the old man remains where he was, clasping his hands together with unfiltered delight. At first glance, it would be easy to assume that the old man is dying of some wasting disease or starvation. He is little more than a too tall skeleton wrapped in translucent flesh and a tattered rope. His hands are essentially bony claws. And yet he beams at you, his sunken eyes glittering with suppressed laughter and feverish life. He smiles at you, his sharpened teeth are muddy brown. Why, I know you, he says, so many eyes have lingered on that tattoo, that noble brow. He reaches for your forehead with a shivering skeletal finger. Hmm, let him touch your forehead. We're so baffled that we'll... Let him do that. His fingertip traces a hot line of your tattoo. Yes, he says, now I remember. Old Syriza once saw you out of the corner of her eye a week before his accident. Ulori Ma sold you a small bag of, uh, he breathes, closing his eyes, sugar-dusted almonds. But those aren't the only two. No, you drift through countless lives, altering and ending them, never leaving a name, never dying, he draws in his breath. Oh, I can't stand mysteries, love them, but can't stand them, and so I must ask you for a simply unthinkable favor. You may have suspected that we were going to eat you, he says, raising a bony finger. This is somewhat true, but only so that the wonders of your life would not be lost. He looks down bashfully, and now that we know you cannot die, well, would you do us the, the honor of letting us eat you just a little bit? If you do, we will share some of our deepest mysteries and yours with you. He folds his hands and will pay you, of course. So, we'll get knowledge and we'll heal anyways. We're a scientist, an explorer at our heart. Our friends are here watching, so you won't need us um, all. But first, who are you people anyway? Ah, yes, I suppose. It must seem strange that a group of strangers is asking to eat your flesh. We are the Dendra O'Hur, he smiles, as if this answers your question. Now, shall we get down to it? 
And who are these Dendra or her? And why does being one make eating me all right? That is a good question, Nimbitu says gravely, but I'm afraid we are quite hungry, so if you will not give us your permission, we must carry on to the next corpse. He giggles, unless they are immortal as well, Scan thoughts. What if we have already consumed immortals by accident? Ha! Um, what sort of mysteries do you expect to learn from eating me? Who can say? It's always such a surprise, he says, and I expect grand surprises in your case. Um, sharing knowledge? Yes, go ahead. Calistique's eyebrows rise, but she says nothing. B2 and his followers lean over you in well-orchestrated unison. Cutting slits in your flesh, hoses dangle from their wrists, leading into their suits. They snake, seemingly of their own accord, into your incisions. For a moment nothing happens. Then you hear a faint whirring as spinning blades grind your organs and suck the pulp up through the hoses. Someone is screaming, and you have a fairly good idea who, eventually, mercifully, you die. Oh my god, we, we lost permanently two health pool. <laughs> After an indefinite amount of time, you open your eyes. Imbitu sits beside you, reading a book. Ah, he says, setting it down. Welcome back. What an exquisite experience that was, though I'm certain you don't need to hear about it while you're waking up. Did we get Viscera Sprig? When hit with a melee attack, deals one relativistic damage and confers bleeding to the attacker. Aha. Uh -huh. An artifact. This charm was given to you by Imbitu in gratitude for letting the Dendro or her consume you. It is shaped like a sprig, but it is made of bone fragments and viscera that were harvested from your body. While it is thus gusting, it displays a level of loving craftsmanship. The ornament has been imbued with mystic properties known only to the Dendra or her, and it acts as a ward against attacks. Oh. But I mean, we were scientists, and this two points was for science. He beams, at any rate, I took the liberty of adding a token of our gratitude to your belongings. Do come speak to me whenever you're ready to discuss what we've learned from our little feast. <laughs> uh, I think we need to recover for a moment. Now, if you happen to have another uh, semi-fatal accident, rest assured that we will bear you back to our chapel as tenderly as a bag of baby birds. He pats your head hand gently, and you have my word that we won't take so much as a nibble without your permission. Thank you for the opportunity to work the Dendra at work, dear. What a singular experience, Kalistik says. Yeah, you you didn't dare, right? Oh my god, we lost two health. But we're role-playing it, so it's all good. We'll, we'll die. We'll die. Oh, that was creepy. We didn't expect it to be so creepy. We, we would have thought we could just remove like a part of our flesh and give it to them and then we would heal and have some temporary health damage, but it seems to work another way. So we'll deal with it. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> um, for more I'm sure hilarious talk with MB2 will meet the next time in the next episode coming. So happy gaming to you and have a good time until then.